my lovely imps. Today, we are gifted a treat. And by that, I mean you are gifted a treat. Because I was gifted this treat, like, I think it was yesterday or maybe the day before that, uh, while I was spending too much time on social media, as I sometimes do, um, guilty. Um, but I was gifted a blessing, which is a self-report of epic proportions, okay? A conservative, probably a fascist, hard to know for sure, but probably, uh, tried to do a critique of a critique of a very, very, very famous film known as Starship Troopers by Paul Verhoeven. Um, if you have not seen Starship Troopers, it's okay. I promise you, you will get enough context from this um, to understand everything that's going on. Um, Starship Troopers is a satirical film that is based off of a novel um, of the same name, a novel which depicts a highly militarized society um, in, at, at war with space bugs. And Starship Troopers basically parodies the novel. It satirizes the ideas presented in the novel um, by sort of just presenting what the, the, the by, by basically presenting the worldview of the novel to you on a platter and letting you see um, with some humor injected, obviously, um, exactly what is trying to be served up. Starship Troopers is an amazing, amazing film. Um, are you mixing it up with Spaceballs? <laughs> I'm sorry, that is so amazing. <laughs> Spaceballs is also a satire and a parody, but it is a very different film, okay? <laughs> very different. <laughs> Amazing mix-up, though. Actually incredible, okay? I don't believe there are any space bugs in space balls. But in Starship Troopers, there are space bugs, and there are no... Well, I guess there are some space balls in that there's, a, there's some nudity in the movie. Anyway, that is incredible and amazing. But we are talking about Starship Troopers and a conservative critique of of a of a critique or critique of a read okay so if you watch starship troopers and you have a single functioning brain cell you will immediately realize that starship troopers is satirical that it is mocking and deriding and insulting the society that uh is presented within the film um, that the hyper-militarized uh, uh, um, fascist society of Starship Troopers, of, the, of both the novel and the movie, um, where the novel was presenting it as a good, as it was trying to present the world as, a, as a, a good thing, the movie was making fun of it and saying, what a stupid idea, how could you ever think any of this is good? If you watch the movie for even a moment, like... Let me just give you an example, okay? At the beginning of the movie, um, there's like a whole bunch of like patriotic, like hyper, hyper patriotic messaging where it's like, hey there, make sure you join up to fight against the arachnids so you can do honor to your family and your society. Live bravely, fight the bugs. And then they go into the high school and there's like, they're being taught in the high school, like all kinds of like military related stuff. Their entire like schooling is all centered around learning about the history of the of, of humanity and how much greater humanity is and how they're going to prevail in war and how to prevail in war. Their whole education is subsumed into this like process of like militarization. And like one of the first characters that you meet is, is like a professor who's a veteran and he's like, they talk about him like he's a hero and then you see him and he's like, he's missing like all, like a bunch of his limbs and shit. And he's like, ah, the glory days of fighting the bugs. And he's just mutilated from, from combat, you know? Um, 
from combat against the bugs. And it's presented as like, he's a hero. Look at the sacrifices he made. And as the film goes on, like immediately after that, you very quickly learn that actually the humans aren't engaged in like a defensive war against the bugs or anything like that. They are actually um, trying to colonize the planets of the bugs. They are involved in a, a, a genocide. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, the infantry made me who I am. Exactly, exactly. Chariot, thank you. Chariot says, the, inf the the quote in the movie is like, the infantry made me who I am, and the camera just cuts to his, like, missing limbs. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah. It's extremely on the nose, okay? Yeah. And, um, yeah. Uh, it, it, you can't miss it, okay? Um, there we go. Um, it's 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 very obvious. Okay, sorry, I've gotten carried away in my uh, in my discussion of the film. Okay, so um, anyway, every once in a while, a you will get a a person who is very very angry about the fact that people have correctly pointed out that Starship Troopers is an effective critical uh, satire of fascistic, hyper-militarized societies that glorify pointless violence, that lie to their populations, that spin up um, irrational myths about n nationalistic fervor. And they will get mad that people say that. And they'll say, that's ridiculous. Let, and, and we have one of those people. We caught one, everybody. We got one on the, on the rod. So without any further ado, let's watch it unfold, okay? Here we go. This is incredible. It's beautiful. Actually, I'm going to read one more thing first. Doe in chat says, I like the part in the film where there's a bunch of anti-bug propaganda and then they're going to a, they, ha they cut to a biology teacher who is dissecting and dehumanizing the bugs but also praising the bugs for being uh, perfect selfless, uh, selfless beings for the good of the collective. Yeah, it's amazing, right? It's like, oh, if only we could be like them. Why the first Starship Troopers movie failed as a parody, a thread. Watching the movie, it's clear the director was aiming for a campy, over-the-top depiction of the Terran Federation. Perhaps not an outright mockery, but a drastic departure from the serious novel. That's a way to put it. Wait! Where'd the- Where's the thread?! No! Where'd the thread go?! There it is! What, what, what the fuck was that?! Twitter threading?! What?! Okay, first, let's tackle a writing pitfall that irks leftists to this day. If you make your characters un- wait, if you make your characters naturally handsome, fit, and well-groomed, then it becomes increasingly difficult to properly mock them. Beauty is self-evident, and the characters in, in Starship Troopers are all good-looking. Now, of course, as we just discussed, the uh, that is not entirely true. Okay, the 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 character whose limbs have been ripped off uh, by the glory of combat um, certainly doesn't fit the uh, the fit, well groomed, etc. category, and instead falls into the horrendously and permanently traumatized by a pointless war category. But we'll put that one aside. It is indeed true that all of the main characters are presented as, um, like, comically, like, like, comically, rigidly, very specific beauty standards. Um, that the, that the, the characters who are presented to us and who are depicted as heroes, even when they're not heroic people, um, even when the arc of the story is that they're becoming worse people, that they are less fulfilled and less complete people, that they are presented as physically beautiful. They are not, um, you know, there is a, the eye of the film is very fixated on an extremely austere uh, and rigid uh, definition of beauty, um, which is interestingly a very, um, it's a very historical 
type of beauty that te tends to be focused with people who believe that you need to be fit for combat in order to be a beautiful person. That uh, you must be uh, perfectly chiseled, you must be ready to fight at any moment, and that is what makes beauty. And there's actually like, like the film, uh, the, the film presents uh, uh, physical beauty in such a weird way. Like the way that, um, like I don't wanna say it's like sexless because it's not completely, but it's highly controlled. It's like tightly wound. Um, there's like the way the characters flirt is and like with each other because there is like a romance that, that goes on in the story of the show but it's really like it's tightly wound and constrained it's hyper clean there's nothing messy about it except of course you know the uh, the sort of active unwinding of the character's psyche as they become more and more subsumed into a military machine but anyway this is just a giant self report here being like yeah of course, uh, who could who who could possibly who, you can never disagree with somebody who looks like a like a like a like a soldier. Soldiers are hot, and they're always right. You're never gonna you're ne you know I, I can't I can't think straight when I see a muscle bound man. So clearly nobody else will be able to. It's just like how can you like uh, again just a self report. As it turns out, yeah, actually, most people can recognize that um, even traditionally attractive, whatever you want to define that as, people can be bad people or can become bad people. But I guess, you know, apparently, if you decide, if you decide to specifically, uh, uh, you know, model the characters in your movie to match a specific aesthetic that is for the purpose of mocking them, you failed in the mockery? I don't know. Okay. I think it's, yeah, I can't, I can't disagree with someone who gets me a boner. It's just incredibly funny. This extends overall to the overall Terran Federation as well. We see clean, beautiful streets. Life seems good for Rico in his polite high school. This is a far cry from the crime-ridden and drug-addicted cities we know today. Where are the homeless encampments? The ghettos? It's an, that's an interesting question. It's almost as if you're being shown an incredibly thin slice of society that you only get to see what the movie wants you to see, and the movie is presenting itself as a, uh, a as a as a amped up propaganda film in the way the book did, that it is a, a the the perfectly clean cookie cutter society. You know, um, it's really funny that this is like the point that, that 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 conservatives love to bring up because they also love to bring up the fact that like when you go and visit North Korea. Um, if you can manage to go and visit North Korea, you're taken on like a tour where you're only allowed to go see specific locations and the guards literally won't let you look elsewhere. When you go, uh, you'll be taken to a model house where there'll be people inside who are like, hello, welcome to North Korea, flip. And you're not allowed to see outside that house. You're taken to a section of the city that's perfectly clean and, and mysteriously only a certain number of people seem to live there, almost as if they're actors that are there every single day for all the visitors who come. And like conservatives love to talk about that shit. And then when it's done to them, they fall for it. It's amazing because they're the type of people that if they went on that tour, they'd be like, wow, what a beautiful society. Oh my God, it really is a paradise here. It's incredible. Yeah, where are the homeless encampments? The ghettos, good question. Good question. Can we nail the Terran Federation for being cruel? I guess. The Terran Federation is a society in which from the moment that people are born, they are induced into a military cult where they are driven to the, literally, they are told from the moment they're born that their purpose is to go out and fight and die gloriously on a foreign planet to save the people they love. Uh, uh, and it is throughout the film repeatedly, everything from uh, from severe mental and emotional trauma to physical violence is meted out on people in lieu of further, of basically traumatizing them into being the ideal soldier, into following orders. But we get an I guess. We get an I guess. Incredible. 
Amazing. Just again, like any person who is able to think for even a moment is able to recognize immediately, okay, um, maybe uh, a society in which your like teenage students are beaten and traumatized and forced to crawl through barbed wire uh, and fire, uh, you know, you know, shoot guns at ar around and at each other. I mean, one of the scenes is that um, one of the scenes early on is that in their training, somebody accidentally turns their gun um, onto live fire mode while they're doing trainings. They all have real guns, and those guns can be turned on to live fire mode with ease. And one of the pe one of the students accidentally turns on his gun to live fire mode and blows the brains out of his friend. That's one of the like earliest scenes in the movie is a student accidentally blowing his friend's head off in training. And then he's just like, oh, could you, maybe you could say that the Terran Federation is cruel. But when you play off cruelty as a joke, you are undermining your own message. This isn't a dialogue about the brutal conditions for training soldiers in a futuristic setting. This is a gag and it's hilarious. No, the point is that the film the, the entire point is that they see it as a gag as well. That it's like, look, it's the boys will be boys type thing. Nah, look, <laughs> see, this is just, this is just how the military is, son. Sometimes somebody gets their knife put through their hand. Um, oh yeah, also, am I, re am I remembering correctly? There's the scene, oh yeah, um, there's the scene with the, the public whipping. Um, because of the live fire incident where the student accidentally kills his friend with live fire, um, they sentence him to a public whipping. Um, and uh, they, they literally just tie him to a stake and then whip his back until it is raw meat. And all of the students have to stand around and watch it for the fact that he accidentally turned on his gun to live fire and killed his friend uh, when, why should they, first of all, why should fucking kids be running around on a, on a, on a, uh, you know, in a, in a military, uh, a death outpost and also have the ability to turn on the live fire to begin with? Oh, am I misremembering? Chariot says it's a live fire training session and Rico orders the soldier to take his helmet off to fix it. My bad. I'm sorry. I actually misremembered. I'm so sorry. I actually misremembered the scene slightly. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. My bad. I was being too charitable to the world of Starship Troopers. They're firing, yeah, they're firing like heavy caliber rifles in a tra in a training session. Um and then the the guy's helmet go the guy's helmet is like malfunctioning. It's like not fit correctly and it's blocking his view. Yeah, anyway, the kid dies right in front of him and then Rico gets whipped, you know, gets like whipped to shreds as punishment when like the society put a bunch of kids with heavy caliber rounds in an environment where they're going to die. They're no doubt going to die. Anyway, let's continue. All right, what about a critique of comparison? Perhaps the enemies of the Terran Federation have a better system. Oh wait, no, they're bugs. I've seen people genuinely argue that the bugs are supposed to be sympathetic, but they're still bugs. This is not a face I can relate to, sympathize for, or even have a dialogue with. This screams at me to kill it with fire. Even if I didn't want to kill this thing, I want to be in orbit far away from this creature. It's horrific and only a contrarian can argue against that. Uh, 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 Self-report again? It looks ugly, so it needs to die. Uh, what am I? <laughs> what am I even supposed to say about that? Like, I think it's ugly personally. Therefore, it must die. Just. Ugh. Also, it's really funny. So the the bug that is being depicted here. This is a brain bug. So this this uh this being is like uh it has like a gigantic brain it is like unequivocally 
a sentient uh, being that is it massively capable of intelligence. In fact, um, if I remember correctly, oh no, hold on, I have to be careful. I have to not mix up the lore of the TV show that was made after the movie and the movie. I'm pretty sure that even in the movie, it's exp it's expressly stated that they're like psychic to a degree that humans can't even imagine, that the brain bugs are able to like basically connect with and feel the pain and see the sights that every, um, every other bug that's connected to them can see. And they're able to share that information between them. So they're like, the, 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 the bugs in the film are not just like, they're not unthinking beings. They are specifically explicitly presented as thinking, feeling beings. And in fact, one of the sort of later scenes in the film is they capture a brain bug and they have it surrounded at, with guns and they're, it's, it's sort of implied they're going to torture it and, um, and kill it. And it knows this. And the, uh, there's like a psychic Nazi character who has like mild uh, psychic powers. And he puts his hand on the, on the bug and he's like, it's afraid. And they all go, yeah! So like the whole movie is centered around like, oh, these disgusting bugs, they're unthinking, unfeeling monsters whose planet we're co colonizing for our own gain. And then the, the final part of the film p points out the fact that actually that's completely untrue. They're not just thinking creatures, they are explicitly feeling creatures capable of fear and the one in front of you is scared and they are celebrating that they're, that it's scared while also 100% drinking the Kool-Aid on the idea that they are, um, that they are fighting an unthinking enemy. It is actually incredible. Like, again, you would have to be asleep or like severely motivated or just very dumb, I guess that's a real option to come to the conclusion that like to not recognize the 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 obvious contradictory information that is being given to you by the society of the film unthinking unfeeling killing machines that are that need to be squashed a creature in front of us that can clearly feel intense fear and is feeling fear sort of the yeah that's sort of the climax of the satire in the film is the it's afraid Anyway, let's continue. The only thing you can really critique about the Terran Federation is the propaganda and incompetence. But when everything is so slapstick, it fails at landing a serious point. These guys are badasses in a funny movie, not a warning about the dangers of fascism. An insane thing to say when the entire movie is telling you that the Terran Federation is not incompetent, that the entire film requires on you believing that they are dying and fighting for a real cause. And it is blatantly obvious through the film that they are not only fighting for a pointless cause, but they are losing. Um, I, who, who was it? Was it? Oh yeah. Uh, the, the best one, the scene I completely forgot about. Cause like I said, it's been a while. Uh, credit goes out to, uh, Will Meneker. Um, of the, uh, of the, uh, Chapo Trap House podcast, okay? Um, shout out to Will, uh, for pointing out the fact, um, that the, like, one of the last scenes in the movie is them greeting the new recruits, and you discover that the Terran Federation has moved to training literal children, not high school graduates, you know, 18-year-olds who are about to go to college and join the military. No, they have a platoon of children in oversized armor. They're literally like, reporting for duty, sir! At the, uh, at the end of the, um, at the, at the fucking end of the film. It's actually incredible. Like, the, like, so this guy is sitting here being like, well, you know, their incompetence, maybe you could critique, maybe you could critique the propaganda, but come on, it's, these guys are badasses. Not to mention that like, the sort of uh, core arc for the main character of the film, Rico, um, is, is that he is becoming a soulless husk. That throughout the movie, he, uh, step by step sacrifices parts of himself that allow him to connect to other people so that he can be a better soldier um, only to basically carve out his soul and become an empty uh, you know soulless unhappy husk in the name of a war 
that they are now having to draft children into a war that they started. There's also another part in the movie um, where it's like that, of course, they never, of course, and this is, this is always another big self-report. And I don't blame everyone for not catching this, but it's especially telling that conservatives never catch it. So in the beginning of the film, there is like a mythology set up for the universe. And the mythology is that there was a me a giant asteroid, you know, uh, like a, or a meteorite or something. I can't remember the terminology they use. Um, but a giant rock crashes um, into a city and obliterates the city. And the, the, the Earth government, the Terran Federation, claims that it was... Um, the, 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 the bugs shot the asteroid into Earth, which created like one of the worst mass casualty events in the, um, in, in the history of the world. And that is like the justification and mythology that the kids are told over and over and over again as to why they have to go defeat the bugs and have to go colonize the planets of the bugs um, is because the bugs uh, shot an asteroid into Earth. And of course, if you think about it for like one second, you realize throughout the entire film that the bugs do not have the ability to shoot an asteroid at the planet Earth. They just know, no, no, the humans don't either. No one does. An asteroid just hit Earth and they use that as a justification to begin a war, to start a war, to colonize planets, a genocidal war, to colonize planets that they want and then they lose that war. Like, it, it's, it's crazy. And conservatives never think about this. They're always like, the bugs started the war. They just literally, unironically, without question, by the pre by the premise of the propaganda in a film that is presented as propaganda in the first place. So the movie presents itself as a like a hypercharged propaganda film. And within it there are depictions of other propaganda films. And the people these conservatives will approach this movie and they will believe the propaganda films in the propaganda film. They're like, literally like, yeah, they did, those bugs did blow up our planet. We gotta go get them. W wait a minute, are bugs real? It's incredible. Wait, was there a, you said there was a reply. I might not have seen this reply. I wanna see the reply you were talking about. Oh, here's an interesting one. You live in one of the most squalid periods of history. Was it too much for you to, a to ask for you to understand the nuance of the point? The nuance of the point that you said that it's a mistake to, cr to use beautiful people in your movie because you fail to be, because beautiful people are naturally good? Like, Huh? Inc incredible. And then of course, like, you live in one of the most squalid periods of history. That's wild, interesting, um, fascinating. An interesting, an interesting, I wonder, I wonder. I wonder what they define as squalid. You gotta, you wonder what it is? I bet it doesn't have anything to do with, you know, the Black Plague era or the fact, I don't think it has anything to do with disease or death or anything like that. I bet it has something to do with uh, those people, you know? Jesus Christ. Anyway, let's continue. I want to find the other one. I never saw this one! No! It's hard to mock beautiful people. Come on, man. Ask yourself why this became a meme. Now imagine if this guy had some muscle on him. Would the insult have landed? Absolutely not! 
<laughs> Dude, come on! <laughs> oh no! I never saw that one! <laughs> Holy shit, that is so stupid. That is like, oh my god, that, like, if that doesn't tell you everything you need to know, like, literally. <laughs> the fedora tipping guy became a meme because he's ugly. That's the meaning of this meme. The meme is that he's ugly. Yeah, okay, okay, dude. Oh my god, that's incredible. <laughs> this response, why is this guy a meme, smart guy? <laughs> handsome fucking Squidward. True! If that's true, why is handsome Squidward a meme? Oh, you fucking got him. I've only truly enjoyed about 10 movies in the last 20 years, and this was one of them. I don't care if it's not a reflective commentary of the evils of our world. In fact, I'd hate it if it was. Me too. Do you guys remember all of the thousands of times in my streaming career that I've pointed out that conservatives, specifically fascists, are the most miserable, insufferable people to be around? This is exactly the type of shit I'm talking about. <laughs> I haven't, I've only liked 10 movies in the last 20 years, and this one was one of them because I, I hate the bugs, and it made me feel good to see when the bugs died. Anyway, I hate seeing gays in my movies. Just, oh my, that is pathetic. Oh God, what a horrible life to live. I've talked about this with fundamentalists as well, that fundamentalists can't enjoy anything and also self-ostracize um, because they'll do stuff like they'll they'll watch they'll watch an episode of The Office and there'll be a joke that's slightly out like slightly doesn't align with their moral worldview and they'll get bent out of shape and they'll just sit there being like. I don't get it. I don't get what's funny. This thing sucks because there's like a joke that had like a sex joke in it or something. And they're just like, and they'll like ruin the time. These are the same people. It's the same fucking mentality. It's a, a worldview that is so rigid that they can't enjoy anything. They literally can't enjoy anything unless it reflects their fascistic worldview. And even if that is a satire of their fascistic worldview. They're like, thank God. Living in today's world, I just can't unsee physiognomy. It might not reflect the spiritual nature of a person, but it certainly reflects to some degree the spiritual nature of a population. I'm sorry. Hold on. We got to do this. Sorry, I got to do something. Hold on. We got to do it. We got to do it. Where's his face? Did he post face? Sorry, I got to see it. I got to see if he's posted face. Okay, so far, he's posted lots of Giga Chad. He's posted lots of actors and art from movies and books and video games. He's posted lots of comic book stuff. Don't see any face. Let's see. Let's see. Let's keep scrolling. Oh, he posted an AI image of a blonde lady with blue eyes. Hmm. Wait a second. What? Why is he in here? Why is he in here? Oh wow, that is a that is a serious look. That is a serious look into this guy's psychology that I am not going to I'm not going to go into. You guys. Whew, that's a That was a real one. That was a treat. That one's just for me. Let's keep going. Let's see. Lot of Oh, not seeing any po face posting. Not seeing any face posting. Lots of reaction memes. It's always interesting, right? 
It's always funny that these people who spend all their time on the internet talking about physiognomy and whatever, they, they never post their face. It's always really interesting to me. Yeah, look at that. Nowhere. Just nowhere to be found. Hmm. Curious, that. Anyway, living in today's world, I just can't unsee physiognomy. It might not reflect, reflect the spiritual nature of a person, but it certainly reflects to some degree the spiritual nature of a population. I say once again, once again, I repeat unto you, the world would be a better place if people like this just actually believed that goblins and orcs were real and they spent their time like venturing forth into the unknown to find where the orcs are hiding. It would be a better, the world would be like, like half of the world's problems would be fixed. They would be like, I swear the orcs, they're over there. I'll find them. And then they just disappear into the woods and never come back. I agree. Handsome, beautiful people living in nice places is definitely a right-wing phenomenon. You can say fascist if you want. Don't really care about leftist name-calling. Hmm. And yes, along the way, leftists and commies get wrecked. It has to be that way, or else it turns to shit. When this guy was thinking of nice, beautiful people, handsome people living in nice places, do you think he was thinking about that house next to fucking uh, Auschwitz or whatever? He was like, oh, the view is fantastic. Anyway, I don't care if you call me a Nazi just because I'm seagiling. What, that makes me a Nazi? That's actually so hilarious. Just remember, there are no, no leftist has ever seen a nice place, let alone lived in one. No leftist has ever climbed a mountain or seen a beautiful place. No leftist has ever, you know, built a cabin out in the woods in a beautiful forest. You know, never. It's never happened. It's only right-wingers ever do that, right? Yeah, did you hear that car? Oh, man. Wait, okay, so let's see. Is there any other funny uh, funny posts um, that this guy has done? I want to see. I want to see what else he has to say. Oh, he's posted the Joker. What did he have to say with the Joker? Okay, that's a weird one. They're, they're saying the Joker is a leftist um, icon. Very interesting. Very interesting. Incredible mind. Absolutely incredible mind. Oh my God. Everyone, I have a gift for you. I have a gift for you all. I clicked on the Doomer image that he posted of the Doomer living in a um, room full of like cigarette cartons. Went to a Catholic speed dating event and I didn't get any mutual matches. It's never been more over bros. I'm not really bothered by it, just slightly annoyed. <laughs> oh, Sherry, <chariot>, no! <laughs> Oh my god. Oh no. Oh no. Please let there be more of this. That's incredible. Just posting outright and open. I can't help but I can't help but see physiognomy everywhere I look, especially when I get turned down at the Catholic speed dating event. <laughs> Oh God, it's magic. Oh shit. Oh shit, here we go. We're about to get bad takes. Lunar Princess Rani is evil and Miyazaki trolled everyone into the bad ending by putting a hot girl in front of it. Oh, <laughs> 
Agreed, but then again, I think all the endings, even the Golden Order one, are flawed. Yeah, that's unfortunately the point of Miyazaki games. He views all institutions and ideologies as inherently corrupt, which has a great deal of truth, but to grow as an artist, he needs to believe in a faith. Oh, my favorite thing on the planet is is when the... Uh, is when is when is when the Catholic the, the Catholic serial uh, uh the, the guy who serially fails his Catholic dating events can uh, uh, has to log on post lots of wojacks and lecture one of the most successful writers in the gaming industry right now on how to grow as an artist. Beautiful, beautiful, oh. Oh my god, this man would, would have such a bright and sterling career as a uh as a as an orc hunter hunting and looking for the orcs out there. My god, imagine imagine how happy he would be. You wanna see what's even crazier though? Watch this. What about the dung eater ending? Yeah, you may curse the, the lands between to a thousand years of affliction and pestilence and doom everyone to a miserable existence, but at least you're not a simp. Psyche. We have been granted an eye into this man's psyche. Does any anybody, real quick in chat, can anybody tell me what you necessarily must do in order to get the dung eater ending. Does anybody know what you what the required, the mandatory thing that you must do in order to get the dung eater ending? Does anybody know? Collect the curse thingies, right? But how do you make the curse thingies? Does anybody know? Anybody know? Murder? Ho ho ho! Not murder. It's not killing people. Not just killing people, I should say. You have to boink. You, you have to infect yourself with a disease and then you have to boink them to death and then boink their corpse so that the, uh, so that the infection that you, uh, that you passed on to them can bloom into a curse that will allow you to create the ring of curse. But at least I'm not a simp. So what do you think this says about a type of guy who can't get a date at the Catholic meetup, huh? What do you what do you think that says about where his brain is at? Is at? All right, I want to do one more. I got to see him. I got to see him. I got to see one more post from this guy. Okay, so there's him just being openly racist. Interesting, interesting. I've beaten Elden Ring and played a little bit of Dark Souls. I think there are a lot of good reactionary themes. The issue is that Miyazaki doesn't seem to have a right answer to the problems he poses. The only solutions are various shades of wrong. Hmm. Let's go one more. Lunar Princess Rani orchestrated the assassination of one of her own family members, threw the entire realm into bloody war, and was the indirect cause of the death of the Golden Order dynasty. And after all that, her plan would have probably failed if not for the player. If not for a simp, says one of his followers. I feel like, like, I feel like this is like the like this is a super empathy test that this guy has obviously failed on like a hundred levels but like if you can't at least understand why ronnie did anything that she did i feel like you have to be uh like fun like functionally medically brain dead you know like um 
Like, I just, I don't, the game literally holds your hand. It is, Elden Ring is the game that is, mo it is the most hand-holdy with its story. It quite literally gives you everything you need to, to understand about Ronnie's motivations and goals. She explicitly tells you why she did it, and you can see that she's telling the truth. It's, like, I don't, like, obviously... There is no clean or good ending in any FromSoft game. They're definitely correct about that. There is never a single good, like, clean answer. That is not what these games are about. They're not about giving you a clean answer. However, it's abundantly obvious why Ronnie would do what she did. And if, and I just, I can't, just think about what you would have to be like, okay? So let's, just for those who haven't played Elden Ring, okay? For those, or for those who haven't thought about the story in a while. Ronnie was born into a, into a royal family where due to the influence of an elder god, from the moment you are born, your will is not your own. Your flesh literally rebels against you if you disobey the will of that elder god. Rani had, by her being bound to the golden lineage, had no control over her own body. Not only that, but her best friend was, unbeknownst to her, uh, uh, turned into a puppet that was programmed irresistibly programmed to kill her if she ever defects okay her best friend that she was 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 given to her and that she actually made a real friendship with and that we see is a lo like actually loves her Blythe like actually loves and protects Ronnie but he is programmed with a physical kill switch that makes him go insane against his will, and there is nothing you can do to prevent it. There is no power in the game that can prevent that from happening, okay? And, again, so she orchestrates the assassination attempt because the only way to sever her soul from the golden lineage um, is basically a sacrifice. So she chooses to sacrifice um, the favored child of her fa of of the family that like she's married into or that that her dad married into which it gets complicated from there but we'll say that so she chooses to kill this guy who is the basically being set up to be the next tyrant of the golden order even if you like the golden order even if you're a psychopath who can go oh yeah the golden order which is built fundamentally on a lie another thing that is revealed to you in the text of the game unequivocally. The Golden Order is built on a lie. It is not sustainable. It is malfunctioning. Um, when Marika and when Marika and Radagon re uh, destroyed and rebuilt the Golden Order, they fucked it up. It is mathematically failing because of because they tried to remove death but death cannot be fully removed. And so instead, it's basically causing a glitch in the world that has led to the living dead wandering all over the place, okay? So in that world, even if you agree with the Golden Order or whatever, how can you possibly not at least understand why the fuck Ronnie in the story would want to find a way, even if it was, even if it involved something terrible, to escape a body that would turn against her if she disobeyed her parents. Insanity. Just insanity. Like, you have to be a sick person to not be able to even, to not even be able to come up with a charitable reason to understand why that story path would be valid. And not only that, but to come to conclusion that it's the worst ending of the game. Just, oh my god. Oh my god. These people, I, I, I told you I was gonna get mad this stream. All right, well, I, I gotta do one more. Sorry, I gotta do one more. Writers then. The smart and buff Chad is the hero. Writers now. The deadbeat loser must be the hero at all times. In the first chapter of my book, my main character f kills a wolf by ramming his arm down its throat and strangling it to death. 
Oh, he's so big and strong, he killed a wolf. It's just, again, what type of a world do you have to live in that there are no, that you think there are no stories in which there's a, like, smart and buff Chad that's a hero? Like, the most popular stories still have that exact thing. Like, what? Fucking Halo! Wait, but, but, but hold on a second. You say Kratos, but Kratos is a smart and buff Chad. He's just also bad. And he's still, like, the hero. Yeah, is this guy mad at Shrek or something? Like, what is he mad at? Yeah, the MCU? The entire Marvel Universe? The most, like, fucking popular pop culture bullshit ever? Is all just exactly this. Just w what kind of a world do these people have to live in? Like, I just really, I wonder. I really w wonder, like, what's going on in these people's heads? Oh, wait, another Doomer. <gasps> okay, it's just him posting about Blender. Ooh. Okay, so he's just not understanding the point that was being made there. That one's boring. That one's boring. Oh, I gotta stop, though. We can't do this guy for much. Oh, no, he's talked about Uragon. All right, all right, I think that's enough. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this trip down uh, a special psychological case study on the internet. Um, these people post this stuff for free. Actually, it's even worse because this guy has a blue check, so this guy pays someone else money to be able to post this stuff so that we can see it. Which I don't know how to feel about that, actually. Because on one hand, it is funny to think that this guy could post that stuff for free, but actually chooses to pay money to one of the richest people on the planet. If not, I don't know if Elon, is Elon Musk still the richest guy on the planet? But anyway, chooses to pay that money so that he gets like 10% more interactions or whatever. But then on the other hand, it's like, hmm, he could just be searching for orcs. Is this really, maybe we really do live in a sick era. Because, you know, in another world, he would be like, this guy would be like out in the forest being like, I'm sure that the, I'm sure that the fairy will be around the next mushroom cap. Oh, no fairy there. Next one, I'm sure. Oh, no fairy there. You know, and then he would eat one and perhaps perish in the woods where, you know, no one would miss him. But, uh, yeah, it's, inc it's incredible. Uh, the lives that these people live. It's sad to witness in a certain to a certain degree, but then you remember that they're horrible people and that the sadness of their lives is self-selected. Like, again, you know, the guy can't get a date at the Catholics only meet and greet dating speed dating situation. You got to imagine what that's like. Imagine what the selection of people is like at the uh, Catholic speed dating um, event and then Think about what it has, what type of, how actively repellent you have to be in order to flunk it. Zero interest, like bottom of the class. Mm. Well, do you think he, do you think he opened by being like, have you ever played the game Elden Ring? Because um, I happen to believe that the, the worst ending is the simp ending. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be a simp. I will never be a simp. <laughs> That's why you know that I'll never go down on you. And then the the lady in the room is just like, what? Hmm, I can tell by your physiognomy that you are uh, an upstanding lass. I'm sure mine Fuhrer would have approved of you. <laughs> Delectable. And then she goes, Jesus Christ, get me out of here now. That's the type of person who, like, actually, we should probably encourage that type of person to go to more Catholic meet and greets because they're the type of person who will probably convince people to leave Catholicism, right? Like, imagine if you were a lady and you rolled up, you know, you're a lonely lady in the Catholic church and you wanted to meet some Catholic guys and you were hoping to, you know, meet some of these 
these giga chad trad casts that you've heard about so much on the internet. And then you go there and it's five clones of this guy, all of them seethingly angry about Elden Ring. And you're just like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm, I'm leaving the faith. God did not deliver me mana today. Why is, it, why is it so hard to find a nice godly man? Forget it. I'm going for the Satanists. Next week, she goes to the Satanists meet and greet. Okay? And proceeds to have the best sex of her life. Oh, God. Anyway, if you enjoyed us dunking on a... Uh, a, a fool who volunteered himself to the world's eyes on a silver platter. Make sure that you press subscribe. I do all kinds of funny stuff. We talk about all kinds of media and whatever. And you guys can even correct me when I get minor details about the film incorrect. It's great. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. We have a wonderful time here. And you should subscribe to Demon Mama.